Lavrov's Minister of Foreign Affairs. Here are some key points that he said at the UN Security Council meeting the other day. He said, Russia is ready to seek a balance of interests to resolve the current crisis in Ukraine. The U.S. doesn't want your average American to know this, but we've been hearing this over and over again since day one of this proxy war in Ukraine that we're dumping billions and billions of dollars to and allowing all these people to be killed, that Russia wants to sit down at a table and sort this out and have a situation where they don't feel their security is threatened and where Ukraine is not on their border with missiles pointed at them. The U.S. and Britain have made sure to stop that every time. So he's just saying that yet again, that they want to sit down and resolve it. They don't want more killing. <laughs> Moscow calls on all those interested in overcoming the Ukrainian crisis to consider the issue of minority rights. Berlin's decision to submit to the U.S. and deploy American long-range missiles on its territory is a humiliation for Germany, is what he said. Berlin has said that they will bend over to the United States and put long-range American missiles on German territory that could easily reach Russia, which, of course, puts us closer and closer to nuclear Armageddon. He also said NATO's military infrastructure is advancing into the Pacific region with the aim of undermining the ASEAN centric architecture. Uh, he's talking, of course, about Taiwan and about all the ways the U.S. is arming the Pacific region in order to basically surround China with various forms of weaponry. And yet again, the U.S. is pushing closer and closer to nuclear war. And yet again, it is horrifying. He also said the resolution of the current European crisis should be accompanied by concrete steps to eliminate threats to Russia emanating from the West. All of these things sound pretty accurate and pretty reasonable. And yet the U.S. doesn't even want you to know these things are being said. Meanwhile, you've got video of Zelensky high-fiving all of the execs of the big banks. As he shakes hands with Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, Lakshmi Mittal of uh, Arcelor Mittal, uh, Philip Hildebrand of BlackRock. There we go, BlackRock. Ray Dalio of Bridgewater, Steve Schwartzman of Blackstone. There's, and then they got them, they're all lined up, taking big, happy photos. So there's Zelensky in the pocket of big banks, shadow banks. And they right now are overseeing the theft of Ukraine. Of course, Zelensky is not the one getting stolen from. He is enriching himself. So much so that I even brought you an article saying the CIA has basically spoken to Zelensky and been like, look, we know you're going to skim. We know you and your other people in, in Ukraine government are going to skim off the top of the billions being sent your way. But could you just decrease it a little bit? Because you you just take it a little too much for our liking, like the 400 million, according to Seymour Hersh, that you've skimmed off the top. That's it's a, it's a bit too much. You can take it. Take, take. Just get it down to like 390. Could you steal 390 million maybe? Also, the United States and the West have floated the idea of stealing the Russian assets that were in, you know, the banks in London, et cetera, which is hundreds of billions of dollars. And of course, this is speeding up de-dollarization. It's actually having the opposite impact that the U.S. wants. But on top of that, Saudi Arabia, which now no longer feels the need to kowtow to the United States, and has dropped the petrodollar deal. They still sell a lot of oil in dollars, so the petrodollar is not dead. It's just not really uh, in uh, in writing anymore. The Saudi Arabia has warned the G7 over Ru over the Russian seizures with a debt sale threat. The warning made to the EU states said people familiar with the matter move under the move underscores Saudi Arabia's growing diplomatic clout. But so Saudi Arabia privately hinted earlier this year it might sell some of the European debt holdings if the group of seven, the G7, decided to seize the $300 billion of Russia's frozen assets. So this is a huge moment of Saudi Arabia standing up to the West and to the, uh, to the U.S. empire because the U.S. is stealing Russian assets. And Saudi Arabia doesn't like that, not because they care about Russia, not because they want Russia to do well, but because if the West steals these assets, basically makes it so that no one's assets around the world are safe. If they're in U.S. dollars, if they're in banks around the world, they could just be stolen. And Saudi Arabia is, is basically saying that they're going to dump the debt 
of the EU, which would greatly harm the EU economically. Anyway, this just highlights, it highlights the shifting geopolitical rift, uh, the shifting economic rift, and it highlights the power of Saudi Arabia to actually hold the US and the West accountable, which has kind of never happened before, at least not on this level. It's pretty crazy.